the Coachella co-founder, he discussed, he had an interview where he, um, he discussed the decision to drop the mask mandate and the vax mandates and then Kanye's exit and all that crazy shit. I'm interviewing this is an article from Consequence of Sound. And yeah, the, the, um, I was not the original interview was in the Los Angeles Times, which is sort of like reading a write up of it. Oh, essentially. Yeah. 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 But um, the yeah. Wayne thing, like the, so this is the co founder, Paul Tullett of Coachella. And he said one of the reasons he dropped the mandates was after the attending the Super Bowl in Los Angeles in February. And mm-hmm. he said, quote, I got there and no one was wearing a mask in the place. No one. So I took mine off, he explained, which convinced him that Coachella should also be, quote, back to normal. He continues by saying, I want to be honest with attendees that everywhere they turned, it wasn't going to be on lockdown because it's not anymore anywhere, especially in the desert and the Inland Empire. It's just not. I didn't want someone thinking that it was going to be on lockdown and then get caught short. Maybe don't come if you're afraid. And so, um, I want to get your thoughts on that because uh, I-, I will add the context that since this Coachella weekend two happened, and I think there's a lot of thoughts to be had about should you have had a mask date, should you have mask mandate, should you have not. But the end result of that is what seems to be a spike in COVID in the Los Angeles area that a lot of people who went to Coachella seem to have also come back with COVID-19. And so I, that was a decision to kind of like relax all the mandates. I think ultimately it wouldn't have, it would have been super hard to enforce anyways. So I don't necessarily hate yeah. that decision, but Sean, I want to get your thoughts for it first. Well, it's interesting for, because well, most of Coachella is outdoor, or like the whole thing pretty much is outdoor. So that's one thing. Um, yeah, I, I will say that, that like, there are some stages and tents that are like kind of indoors with a lot of air conditioning. So there's that, but a lot of it's outside. Yeah. Main stage, most are of it's outside. So for me, it's like um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, the interesting part is the the vax mandates. Um, but at the same time, it's super hard to enforce with that many people. So that part I do understand. And like going through stadiums and stuff, watching a thousand hockey games this year, having to do a vax mandate with, you know, only a couple thousand people at a stadium, and it takes a long time to get all of that. I can only imagine like that for a festival is just nearly impossible to do. So at that point, I'm not going to. You know, that's not the hill I'm going to die on or anything. Um, and at that point, it's you're left to your own discretions. Um, if you're not comfortable, then that's okay. Then, you know, stay home. Don't don't go. If you are, then you can, you know, you weigh the risks and the rewards of it. And that's all. But, you know, the more vexed you are, the smarter. So, i.e., I had COVID in January. And yeah. Fine. So. Yeah, I, I went there kind of knowing the risks. I have some, I guess, things that if I were to catch a severe amount of COVID and I were unvaccinated, it could be a problem. But I'm also on the younger side. I'm also generally on the healthier side. And I'm more or less caught up with the vaccines. I've gotten one booster. I should probably get the second one. But um, that, like, I also wore, I chose, like, to wear a mask during certain parts of it. Like, especially, like, yeah. around the bathrooms and things like that. I still kind of came yeah, around. Don't with, blame like, me a, for that. <laughs> <laughs> I still kind of came around with, like, a stuffy nose and feeling sick a little bit afterwards. I took a COVID test that came out negative. But, you know, how these things work. I ultimately feel like, listen... We have decided as a society, um, or like it has been decided for us as a society, that we go on with COVID-19, whether it exists. I mean, a lot of people don't even think it exists or not. But like we continue with (laughs) COVID-19 as it exists in society, and you weigh your own risks, rewards to it based on what we're given. We have vaccines that are readily available. There's pills and nasal um, remedies that are being out there. Mm -hmm. But it's also being said that as a result of, in a broader sense, as a result of everyone kind of giving up on COVID, so to speak, you're getting a lot of people who had previously taken a lot of precautions who are now forced to enter society because everyone else in society has moved on from it, but they still have these comorbidities. They still have these issues. Like, um, I have a good friend who uh, has a lot of basically a lot of pre-existing conditions she's healthy she's like young in her 30s but like she could be really messed up if she catches covid she's been really careful barely outside wearing masks all the time she still managed to catch covid she's had to be in and out of the er getting monoclonal antibody treatments like non-stop for the past week because of catching that and it's like this is the society she now lives in if she wants to participate in the society and by that i mean have a job, pay rent, do all those things that are required yeah. for society, then she has to expose herself to COVID-19 and all the people who have, who don't care. And so it, it's a difficult thing you have to weigh out. I'm not sure if it could have mm-hmm. been done any other way, but it, it really just kind of illustrates Coachella is one example where like 
we're kind of on our own now. Um, yeah. you, you take that as it is and you can, there's a lot of larger thoughts that I'm stopping myself from having because this is audio face and not power report, but it, 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 this is kind of the society we're living in and Coachella is an example of that. Um, but also yeah. really, really juicy from this is the stuff about Kanye <laughs> mm-hmm. because Ye was not going to be on the, uh, listing for Coachella. And then he was announced and then it was going to be months where he was going to be on Coachella. And then last minute, he pulls out maybe two weeks before weekend one. There's this whole deal with the weekend where they're trying to not pay the weekend his goddamn money. <laughs> that ended up working out. He played a perfectly fine show at Coachella. And Talek kind of talks about this. He says, quote, I'm good with Kanye. I zoomed with him a couple days prior. I think it was a good decision for him. And that's very little of what we've heard from all of this. That's what everyone's saying is we feel like it's a good decision for him. I'm just not convinced it was his decision, (laughs) but if he is feeling that he should not do Coachella because he needs to handle his increasingly mounting personal situations and personal problems, that is the right thing to do. I just have been covering Kanye for the past five years, and he has rarely on his own volition made the right decision for his life. Very true. (laughs) Yeah. And overall, he'd had like some random thoughts here that I don't really care about, you know, Rage Against the Machine pulling out, all these other different things and examples. Um, so he, m- mostly you get the kind of opinion from this guy that Coachella worked out more or less the way he wanted it to. And by the way, he also did confirm that Frank Ocean is supposed to be headlining Coachella in 2023. It, anything can change with a lineup, so take that with a yeah, grain of salt. Yeah, we'll see. Especially with Frank Ocean rumors. Like, oh, Frank Ocean, yeah. Especially, yeah, yeah. Frank Ocean. I believe and Half- it when it happens. Frank Ocean and Half Life Three. That's how. It, those are the same like realm of rumors for me. <laughs> is, Frank, is Frank Ocean gonna have like uh, fake oceans like MF Doom? <laughs> if there were fake oceans, that'd be so hard. I re- I respect him thirty times more. If, if he had, <laughs> if he had Kid Cudi be a fake ocean and like no oh. one knew the difference, I would I'd, I'd die. Just Kid Cudi with uh, with green hair. Oh my god. Die. Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, and then really fast, there's like my sort of take from Coachella overall. And I'm going to do like a separate members f- portion for this. So become a member at join.syndicate23.co. But I will say this one thing that I mentioned there that was like Coachella overall, maybe you're a music fan. You understand this when I tell you, maybe you're not. But if you go to Coachella, it's mostly just to be around a bunch of drunk, high, young adults of relatively successful stature um, as they screw around in skimpy clothing and barely listen to music while like being mad drunk or mad on drugs, right? Like that's why I'm like the, the people at security were barely able to keep track of all of the drugs and all the stuff that people were doing and getting through security, let alone checking people's vaccine records and all this other stuff. So like it would have been a mess to begin with. But like it's part of me is like okay i'm happy to see musicians a lot of the musicians were cool all that kind of stuff i'm happy to see this kind of um stuff happening i'm happy to see people kind of getting back to having concerts and things like that because it had been so many years afterwards but unfortunately people are there and so what i saw a lot of at the concerts was sexual harassment sexual assault like i one of my friends who I was with, we went to the bathrooms and while he was in one of the bathrooms, he heard someone the next next all over being sexually assaulted and heard that entire th- and like all that stuff was happening like around him at the same time. And not like broad daylight, but I mean, like this was 9 p.m. Everyone who's at Coachella is going to be at Coachella like on that day, just around at shows and shit. And people are still brazenly like behaving fucking terribly so i think it's just to say that like this is something we've talked about to varying degrees on this podcast that we're all a community of music fans of people who love music and like it it couldn't leave me that entire weekend that like this woman's (laughs) coachella is ruined let alone like a significant part of their life dealing with all these ramifications that come with sexual violence we've talked with a lot on this podcast about music this is to say that like when we're going out to concerts this summer, especially because it's been a while since we've been out, I think a lot of people um, look out for others, be respectful. When I say don't be a dick, it's just like, oh, don't be a dick. Don't be mean to people. But it's like, fucking keep your hands to yourself unless you're with someone who was like consented to that beforehand. And like, we're all just there to have a good time and enjoy our friends and company and see the artists that we want to. It doesn't need to be, it shouldn't be messed up because you can't keep it in your pants. So that's just like my plea to anyone listening. Just like watch out for each other and mm-hmm. fucking learn to behave. You're a God. Like if, if you've gotten to one of these music festivals, you're a goddamn adult. So like, just learn how to behave. Agreed. On that, sorry to bring it down, but like I just felt like no one else is talking about that aspect of Coachella and 
<laughs> this is this is the fucking podcast to do it. So whatever. <laughs>